right down there is uh, Buckingham Palace well not quite Buckingham Palace it's actually uh, a statue in front of Buckingham Palace this is Green Park this this beautiful place uh, it's a royal garden as you can see here but we're not going to cover Green Park today we are going to cover this road here which is Piccadilly and we're going to go down this way just left of here on the corner just there is uh, Hyde Park and uh, this is the A4 uh, which is uh, a major route into London or out of London uh, Japanese embassy there I think and um, this left side is called Piccadilly Arcade and Piccadilly kind of starts around here somewhere um, going into London so let's take a walk in and uh, I'll talk you through it. Uh, like I said, Piccadilly is a, a major, major road. Uh, it used to be uh, up there with places like Oxford Street as the shopping capitals of uh, London, but it's not that anymore. Uh, instead, it's a, a high-end uh, road with a few nice shops and to the north there, um, this side of the road, um, the other side of the road, is home to Mayfair and on the other side of that is Oxford Street and Bond Street and um, that way as we saw before, well you can see Bush, but uh, that is uh, Buckingham Palace. Uh, this is um, the most famous shops on this road are Fortnum and Mason, uh, well the Royal Academy which is a museum uh, gallery thing and not a shop I'm sure there's a shop in there and there's the Ritz Hotel which is coming up on the right hand side and there's also uh, Hatchard Bookshops which is now Waterstones or HMV same company and uh, Simpsons Simpsons the Simpsons uh, they, uh, there is now also Waterstones uh, and it's a flagship Waterstone store. So we'll have a look at that anyway. This is uh, Bolton Street just in this intersection here uh, with one of our first shops. Uh, no idea what shop that is. EEC. Interesting. Uh, coming up to an underground station. Uh, one of the easiest ones to get out to go to Buckingham Palace served by the Jubilee Line, Piccadilly Line and Victoria Line and this uh, station is called Green Park because to the right of us is Green Park oddly enough uh, on our left hand side we've got a bank and then we've got the station again another entrance behind all these buses and then we've got uh, Marks and Spencer's Simply Food it's going under a bus shelter here uh, you can pay for the buses with these wonderful machines here or if you have an Oyster card then that's probably the easiest way to get about in London. And uh, we're coming up to the Ritz under these uh, famous arches. Uh, the Ritz Hotel was um, owned and run by Mr Ritz back in uh, the day, <laughs> in 1906. Uh, he wanted to build a similar building to the one he had in Paris and uh, he also wanted it to resemble the arcades of Rue de Rivoli. So if you've ever been to Paris and you know uh, Rue de Rivoli which is a, a major shopping uh, mall place where Angelina, uh, the uh, patisserie place uh, tea room is it looks like this uh, and this is the Ritz. The Ritz is a hotel inspired by Caesar Ritz, designed by Charles Muse and Arthur Davis, opened in 1906. Just like I said, uh, probably because I'm just uh, reading off the Wikipedia sheet, <laughs> makes things a bit easier. This was uh, one of the first substantial steel frame structures in London and um, it was the first hotel in London to offer good customer service. Uh, Londoners weren't too uh, familiar with high customer service. Look at that. Say hello. Okay, don't then. Uh, opposite the road we've got Boots and Iran Air. Uh, never flown with them before. 
I can honestly say. Aeroflot, the Russian Airlines, who look closed. It's not a weekend, so uh, the shop should be open if they're around. Uh, coffee shop, Cafe Nero, probably one of the better coffee shops. Accessorised and accessory shop in London. Uh, big issue seller. Uh, very common in London, uh, pick up uh, one of their big issue magazines when you're in London and the money goes to help that particular individual uh, and it's an alternative for the beggars to begging. Uh, they earn money by selling uh, those magazines, uh, they pay for the magazine to buy it and then uh, uh, they keep the difference in uh, what you give them. Uh, it's something like two pounds now and they get to keep the difference between that and what they pay for the magazine. Uh, what have we got here? Caviar House in Ukrainia. Um, there are quite a few nice places to eat on this road. Uh, Alba uh, Marble Street just uh, in the intersection just there and uh, one of many patisseries here. So on St James's Street, there's a Davidoff store over there, which is a cigar chain. Oh, missed the caviar house behind us. Oh, let's cross over while well, we can. Green man there, you know, uh, the little green man telling us that we can walk over. Very important that you adhere to the uh, walking codes over here, because otherwise you'll get run over. And getting run over is never fun, because they break your legs and things like that which could be very, very painful. Imagine that. You have no legs or they're broken. Oh, very painful. pret a uh, somewhere cheap to get cheapo coffee and uh, okay-ish food. De Beers, one of my favorite jewelers, where I got my wedding ring from. Um, down that street is Old Bond Street, and that street turned into Bond Street, which then, uh, junctions with Oxford Street around uh, Bond Street Station. Then we've got Burlington Arcade across the road. Ah, oh, let's go across the road. Come on, let's go across the road. I've got to show you one of my favourite shops in London. Well, actually it's not one of my favourite shops in London. It's one of my favourite shops in Paris, but they have a store here in London. And I'm so excited, I would almost jump this red light to cross the road like these people have. Look at that guy, almost got run over. I'm not gonna do the same thing because I'm carrying a camera and I don't really wanna get run over. So traffic's clear. I'm walking on a red man, not to me, uh, but I'm walking on a green man over here. So watches of Switzerland, uh, who look like they're closed down, but they're actually not, they are open. And uh, they're going to become a mapping and web or something. Uh, Piccadilly Arcade on the right hand side. Another Starbucks coffee, a uh, Rishul, a little patisserie place. Uh, lots of uh, these little patisserie places around. And uh, this is one of my favourite shops, it's uh, La Durée, if you're French or come from Paris, you know what this place is. It's, it's a place uh, that invented the macaron. Look at that, beautiful macarons. Uh, at the top, it's probably a rose flavor macaron followed by pistachio, followed by some nut thing. Oh, I don't know all the flavors, but they're really, really, really nice. They're like these little, um, uh, dessert sugary pastry things filled with cream, uh, flavoured cream. It's so yummy, it's ridiculous. Over there on the right hand side there's Hawks and Curtis which is a ready to wear shirt shop. Uh, they also do uh, bespoke shirts. Uh, the shirts are not that customizable on the ready to wear selection but they are when it comes to uh, bespoke because bespoke you can have whatever you like can't you yes that's right um royal academy of arts uh i've got some spiel on this on second the royal academy is uh, privately funded uh it's not government uh run and uh there's uh, uh what house is this this is the 
Burlington Burlington House of Piccadilly and uh, there's always some sort of monument or something in the middle here which is quite groovy uh, they get all sorts of odd weird things in here um, Tracy Emin is a, a member of this museum and uh, they uh, try to display as many modern and contemporary uh, works of art as they can. Uh, they have uh, an art collection that rivals the Tate Modern. Um, in fact, uh, it was founded through a personal act of King George III on the 10th of December 1768. Okay, enough of art. Uh, although I do like art now and again. It's uh, it's, uh, what shall I say, not really my thing. Okay, so, out the gates we go. Really bored guy. Uh, imagine that, just sitting there all day. Next up, one of my favourite shops in the whole wide world is Fortnum & Masons. Now, Fortnum & Masons is often shortened just to Fortnum's and it's a Royal want Warrant holder which means they supply food to the royal family and uh, they sell high quality goods and are known for its quintessential English charm and it's most famous for its magnificent food halls which are two floors high. Uh, the rest of the department store they sell things like board games and uh, and they got lots of restaurants in there and it's really really famous for having tea. Uh, Ritz Hotel is really famous for having tea, uh, you know, if you say oh I had tea at the Ritz, people go oh yeah I know that, um, and it's really expensive, but this place is so much better. Uh, look, they, they got a, a lunch menu and a dinner menu here for one of their many restaurants, they've got um, Carla ice cream place in here as well. Oh, it's so nice. I, I really, really love the food in here, and um, it's quite an old building. They've been around since 1707, and uh, I've, oh, the food is just unbelievable. Uh, come in here to go to the parlor for ice cream for some tea, or or come here for tea because it's so nice. Uh, any of the restaurants, the, the quality is very, very high. Even come here just to go to the um, delicatessen uh, where you'll find a, a whole range of patisseries and uh, savoury food items and um, uh, how did they start out? They started out selling fresh poultry or game served in aspic jelly, whatever aspic jelly is. Uh, this is the Hatchard Booksellers, uh, the bookstore I was telling you about. It's really famous, really really old uh, and they sell lots of classic old books. Uh, then uh, there's Biagio Bar. On the left hand side um, there's a little chocolate shop and another cafe, Wasabi, who sells sushi uh, for pretty cheap. Another pret manger over on the right hand side now. We've got local luggage, cilantro, uh, which I've never seen before in my life. Um, Ladro and uh, let's just keep walking, just got congested in the uh, human traffic there. Ladro, very uh, nice looking stuff in there. Brioche on the left, uh, another little cafe shop on the right hand side. Uh, we're coming up to a little church chapel place uh, which has a, a marketplace in front of it uh, selling lots of things and I think a lot of the money goes to charity. Uh, so look. Oh, okay, they've got emotional counselling and uh, they specialise in antiques and collectibles. Open on Wednesdays to Saturday, there's also vibrant art and craft market selling goods from around the world. Ooh, look at that. In front of that uh, big uh, church backdrop, the big hot tower there, and there's even a Cafe Nero there. Cafe Nero is probably one of the better places, there's also one there. 
um, to have a coffee in London because to be honest coffee in England generally sucks so Cafe Nero if you want a place then that, that's, that's probably your best bet. Uh, coming up to Costa Coffee uh, which uh, has gone bust but are uh, still open. Did they go bust? I swear they went bust. A coffee chain just went bust recently in this wonderful credit crunch of ours. And we're coming up to Piccadilly Circus, and uh, which will be the end of the Piccadilly Road. And just to round off what we've learnt here, Piccadilly is one of the widest and straightest roads in London. Oh, this is Waterstones. Form, form, something Lee Simpsons. Of Piccadilly, number 203. Uh, this used to be one of the most famous clothes stores in London and now they've uh, converted it into uh, the flagship bookstore of Waterstones uh, who are now owned by HMV. Uh, it was originally set up by um, Mr Waterstones who used to work for WH Smith and he left W.A. Smith to form up his own bookshop and then he sold out to HMV. He tried buying it back at one point but he was unsuccessful and uh, so it's still owned by HMV. Interesting that isn't it? There's a NatWest Bank if you need uh, a cash machine which is free of charge in London. There's one here. Not too far, just straight through uh, past Piccadilly um, is uh, Leicester Square and uh, the other side of that, um, on the left hand side slightly, is Chinatown and left of that is Shaftesbury Avenue. But one of my favourite places is Tokens restaurant in Japan Centre here, it's quite cool. They sell nice fresh sushi and sashimi and they now have uh, a store selling random Japanese um, goods and novelty items and also sushi to go inside there. Uh, Pontus, which I wouldn't recommend eating in. Another Scotch steakhouse, which is the same as all the other steakhouse things. If you look at this font, be aware, because the, uh, the, the food absolutely sucks. And uh, here we are, pretty much, uh, oh, Zavi there, which is uh, now bust. Um, they'll change to somebody else in the future. and. Uh, Lily White's is not in Piccadilly, uh, well that's it, um, some souvenir shops, uh, plenty of those around and, and that was Piccadilly so uh, I hope you enjoyed the walk and uh, I'll see you again next time, things to do in London, you saw Piccadilly, until next time take care.